So I just want to make sure that uh, you're aware of that. Uh, we have a limited number of spots in our meeting. I don't think we'll hit our limit, but if we do, we are going, uh, in case we did, we're recording so that we can post uh, a link to tonight's meeting on our website. It's going to be there uh, so that if you'd like to watch any parts of it again, sit down and watch it with um, someone else from your family or with your student or a friend who maybe couldn't make it tonight, it will be there and accessible um, for them. So tonight uh, we have, uh, a, like I said, a big uh, agenda. My name is Joe Webster. I'm the principal here at Meadowdale Middle School. One thing I can say is I am so excited to be uh, looking forward to opening a school with all of our students returning uh, to the building. Um, last year, as we know, was extremely difficult. We know this year is gonna have its own set of challenges, but um, schools without kids are, are just buildings. And so we are really, really uh, excited and looking forward to having your students with us. Um, but uh, after we get through uh, our land acknowledgement, we will talk about um, our school, uh, a little bit about uh, what the schedule looks like, what a day is like for a student here at Middle Middle School. We'll talk quite a bit about some uh, COVID health and safety protocols, and uh, then we'll have some time uh, for some questions. So with us tonight, we have uh, Mr. Freeman, our assistant principal. Mr. Freeman, are you able to unmute yourself or do I have to ask you to do that? I'm glad to unmute and a uh, quick introduction about myself. I'm new to Meadowdale Middle School community and new to Edmond School District. I have 20 years, this is my 20th year of teaching middle school in, largely in the state of Washington and working with middle school students. So it's really exciting to be here as a member of the community. We also have one of our counselors, Ms. Hyde Prieto. You can't unmute. Oh, there you can. Where I can now. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, Rachel Hyde Prieto, uh, one of the counselors my students I handle are students with the last names of L through Z. Uh, Mr. Sos, my partner, he works with students last names A through K. And Ms. Uh, Maribel Manano is with us tonight. She's a staff member here, a paraeducator in our multilingual program. Good evening, I'm Maribel Menano. Soy Maribel Menano. Trabajo en el departamento de estudiantes, estudiantes que están aprendiendo inglés. I work with our English learners. Uh, and some other staff uh, who will, uh, we'll, we'll talk about some other staff who will be good for, uh, for you to know um, during tonight's uh, presentation. So, Mr. Freeman. We would like to acknowledge the original inhabitants of this place, the Snohomish people, and their successors, the Tulalip tribe, who since time immemorial have taken care of, hunted and fished and gathered on these lands. Uh, we respect their sovereignty and their right to self-determination, and we honor their sacred spiritual connection with the land and the water. By acknowledging these homelands, we commit to working with tribal nations to further the education aims that they have identified in our classrooms and schools. Great, thank you for that. So a little bit about Meadowdale Middle School. I know that uh, what's first and foremost on people's minds right now, uh, and, and rightfully so, is how are we gonna reopen school and how are we gonna reopen school safely and welcoming your students back to our campus. But I do wanna talk a little bit about our school values and uh, what, we, uh, what we're about here at Meadowdale Middle School and what we try to, uh, to live uh, every day. Uh, we center our work around three core values of community, uh, growth, and belonging. Um, it, to kind of summarize that, uh, we value growth in our students uh, more than just coming and, and achieving at high levels. We want every student to grow um, from where they enter our doors to when they leave. We value our students both belonging to a community while also being able to express themselves as individuals. We value effort more than talent. Uh, we try to teach our students that if they don't get it right the first time, that's part of the learning process, and we want them to keep trying. Uh, we see a lack of success as an opportunity to learn, and we encourage students to take risks 
and get outside of their comfort zone. Um, and we can talk a lot about how those values and, and fit with the, uh, the mindset and where middle school students are at this age in their um, social, emotional, uh, physical, um, and intellectual development, but we would run out of time if we did that. So, um, and we also, as, as you can see, um, every other slide we are translating into Spanish. Um, for Spanish speakers, if we go too fast, I apologize. Again, this will be posted on our website and you could watch a recording of it um, if you'd like to uh, have more time to read each slide, but I'll try to go um, at a pace that works for, um, for everyone. So our first day of school is Wednesday, the first, or I'm sorry, the 8th of September. Today's the first, so one week from today. Uh, our last day of school is June 24th. Uh, our school day at Meadowdale Middle School starts at eight o'clock and it ends at 2.30. If you are planning to bring your student uh, to the school and not have them ride the bus, we do anticipate there'll be more families choosing to do that this year. There are a few things that we would ask. First, please don't drop off your student before 7.40 in the morning. So 740 to 755 is a good window for dropping them off. Uh, we do have some families that try to um, just stop in on 168, which is the street that our school's on and have their student get out um, while they're stopped in the road. And um, that's dangerous. Um, and it's also illegal. We've had people get tickets doing that, so please don't. Um, but the Meadowdale play fields, which are half a block away, some families, if our parking lot is really busy, which again, it might be, um, it is an option to uh, go to the play fields and drop your student off there and have them um, walk over to campus. Our class schedule. So at Benedict Middle School, all students have six classes. We are on a block schedule, which means they take half of their classes each day. The classes are 95 to 100 minutes long. Uh, so there's three classes on, uh, on uh, actually this is Monday through Friday, uh, not Monday through Thursday. Think, and we have a homeroom every day as how we start the day. Our odd periods are on Monday and Thursday, on Wednesday. So periods one, three, and five on odd days. Our even periods are Tuesdays and Thursdays. And this is a change for those of you who have been to Meadowdale in the past. Um, our Fridays will now also be odd or even, and it will alternate. In the past, we had all periods on Fridays. There's a couple reasons for that. Uh, the first is that we are running four lunches this year, and we're doing that to uh, make sure that we have enough space for students to um, physically distance. Um, and eat safely, and you can't run an all-period schedule with four lunches. So that's why we have to run a block schedule. Uh, but another reason is really it's safer uh, while we're in a pandemic to have fewer passing periods and have students in fewer classes each day. So instead of them being with six different classes on a Friday, they will only be with three. Classes, as I said, are about 95 minutes. Um, I'll, I'll leave this here for just a minute. I should go through these a little quicker. I'll get my pace, Monse, I promise. And just so you, um, everyone's aware, we're, we are filtering all of our decisions that we're making right now through um, what we need to do to make the school safe for COVID. That is our, um, that's our decision maker. Uh, what we've been asked to do by the state of Washington and by the Department of Health is uh, to get all kids back in school um, in the safest and best way we can. Some situations um, are better than others, but we're keeping that in mind with all the decisions that we're making. So this is just a little animation of what a typical week would look like for students. Monday, one, three, and five. Tuesday, two, four, and six. Their homeroom class is the same every day. It's an ungraded class. Then we do that again, and then Friday would be 
even or odd. And after school, Monday through Thursday, we have a period of time called study club from 2.40 to 3.30, where students can stay after school and get help from a teacher. So if a typical student schedule looked like this, let's say they had math first period, social studies second period, health and fitness third period, science fourth period, English fifth period, and then an elective class, their elective class sixth period. If we put that over uh, the schedule that I just uh, showed, it would look like this. We'd start the day with homeroom, it'd have math, PE, English, on Tuesday, homeroom again, then they'd have social studies, science, and their elective, they would do that again. And then if this was a Friday, an odd week, uh, then they would just have that same <clears throat> Monday or Wednesday schedule. If it was an even week on Friday, then it would look the same, except on Friday, they'd have the same schedule that they had on Tuesday and Thursday. So I hope that helps make sense. The kids figure this out really, really quick. It's not very challenging for very long. Our first day of school, as we said, is a week from today, which is a Wednesday. So that will be an odd day. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Freeman to talk about lunch. So lunches this year are all free breakfast and lunch to all students this year. Um, there will also be some a la carte items available for purchase. Um, we do ask that families apply for free and reduced lunch because that helps uh, waive other fees such as ASB, uh, other fees that are associated with the district. We will have four lunches to increase seating and maintain distancing. And we'll show you some pictures of the commons in just a moment. Students are expected to have their masks on unless they are seated and eating. Lunches are for 30 minutes and students are able to go outside and get some exercise. And the library is also open for students to access during lunchtime. Here is a photo of our commons. And students are able to see, I'm not sure if you're able to see it, but you can make out little pieces of tape on every other seat. So no student is seated directly across from one another in the commons. And that's part of our, our distancing measures. Here's another angle of the commons. Students, again, are allowed to sit on the seats without the tape or on these red dots on the, on the seating up on the bleachers there. Um, and the, you can see the lunchroom there under the flags and that there are markers for students to be spaced out around and down the hall towards the gym wing and the music wing of the building. Next, a little bit about COVID health and safety. I think we'll go back to Joe or is this back yeah. to Joe? So um, as I hope everyone knows, uh, masks will be required at all times uh, inside and outside while students are on campus. Uh, and that's a mask covering their mouth and nose. Um, the only time that they don't have to wear a mask, obviously, is when they're eating lunch. We will be asking students to be seated uh, when they're eating and have their mask off. Uh, we'll have extra masks here on campus. And um, it's just, it's, it's what we have to do. We know that it's difficult. It's gonna be challenging for some students. Um, but it's what we have to do to get them back in school. Uh, we also uh, are going to be asking students to maintain some physical distancing. That's going to be really, really challenging. Um, most of the things that uh, a virus likes uh, are behaviors that middle schoolers exhibit, <laughs> which is they like to be around each other. Uh, they like to be close to each other. They like to gather in large groups. They like to talk really loud. And so we know it's going to be challenging and we're going to do our best uh, not to be heavy handed, but to remind students frequently that we need them to keep moving and um, move rapidly from class to class. Um, please ask your student how they're feeling in the morning. If they don't feel well, it's OK to keep them home. We really uh, we expect there will be more absences this year just out of an abundance of caution on the part of families. 
um, in making sure that, that students aren't coming to school um, when they are ill. The Edmonds School District does have a handbook of all of their COVID health and safety protocols. Um, and that's available on our district website. And um, we did we put that in the chat, Mr. Freeman? Okay. So it's also in the chat. If you'd like to go there, you can um, download that right now if you'd like something uh, more detailed about the health and safety protocols. This is one of our classrooms set up with uh, distancing for 30 students. As you can see, this is a challenging environment. It's very crowded. Our desks are typically grouped together um, in groups of three or four, and these triangular desks work really well for that. It's great, it facilitates group work, which is appropriate for middle school age learners. Um, right now, that's more difficult to do, but this is an example of how some classrooms may be set up. We also have set up some classrooms like this and some duos where students can sit um, near another student if they might do some work in a pair, but they're not sitting directly acro across from each other. And they are um, definitely more than three feet apart. By the time they're in those chairs, they're actually about five or six feet apart. And this third configuration is a trio, which again, they're not uh, directly facing each other um, and they are about five to six feet apart once they're in those chairs. Um, the duos and the trios obviously allow for much more floor space and, and easier movement throughout the room. Um, so I would expect those would be more frequent than the classroom that just has them all, um, you know, looking like they're in individual rows. Um, uh, when your students come to school here. This is a science classroom. Uh, this is an example of one of our challenges. These science tables typically have four students at them. They won't, they'll only have two or three. We added some other tables to the classrooms, but I think this would be an example of where we are doing the, the best we can. Um, and, and we're gonna make sure that all of our students are back in school, all of them that want to come back to school, um, even though it, it, and this is why it will be very important for them uh, to be wearing masks in the classroom at all times. Our classrooms also all have hand sanitizer. They all have uh, sanitizing wipes that students will be asked to take and wipe down their desk before they, they before class. Uh, we have extra uh, masks uh, and other PPE that students or staff uh, might want. So now let's talk about our counselors. So Ms. Hyde uh, Preto already introduced herself. <clears throat> Mr. Sos is not here tonight. He's our other counselor. Mr. Sos, our counselor for uh, students from A through K. Uh, Ms. Hyde Preto from L through Z. And uh, they are good people to get to know. If your student needs help with their academics, if they're having um, problems with peers, uh, if they're having a problem with a teacher, um, if they're having problems at home, um, any number of things. So um, uh, we're blessed to have two outstanding counselors. Uh, someone else uh, that's good for the community to know is Jackie Julian. Uh, Ms. Julian is our student support advocate, and she is here to assist families who are in need of resources. So if they're having um, housing issues, food insecurity, um, in need of, of just some basics, maybe um, clothing, um, school supplies, um, Ms. Julian is here to help those students and those families. So what do you do if you need help? Mr. Freeman? Yes. Um, if your student needs help academically, you're welcome to reach out to your teacher first and foremost. That's the first point of communication. After that, you're welcome to reach out to the counselor as well. And, and then after that step, you're welcome to reach out to the administrator, either Mr. Webster or myself. And we're glad to help problem solve and facilitate. But again, do do ask that if your student is having a problem with a specific teacher to try to reach out and resolve it with the teacher directly. If your student needs help with peers or social issues, a great first point of contact is the counselor or an administrator, again, Mr. Webster or myself. We also have a wonderful student intervention coordinator, Michelle Richardson, who couldn't be with us tonight, but she's another great resource for students who, um, who need help and they, they're welcome, students are welcome to approach us and ask to speak with us directly. If your student has an IEP, an individualized educational plan, 
and you have questions about it, please contact your student's case manager directly. And those teachers should be reaching out to you early this school year to make contact. Okay. Next, immunization requirements. These are medically verified records that are required by law for all students. Uh, the Tdap requirement, the Tdap vaccine is now required for incoming seventh graders. This used to be for sixth grade and that changed two years ago. Uh, there are many students who are not in compliance at this time. All students who are out of compliance with immunization shots have been contacted by phone, email, and paper mail and exclusion letters were mailed out last week. Your student will not be able to attend until uh, immunizations are complete by law. They cannot start on the first day of school if your student's Tdap vaccine is not documented. You're welcome to contact Cindy Gergen, our school nurse, if you, have, if you need assistance. At this time, COVID-19 vaccine, COVID vaccines are not required for students. They are, however, recommended. Next, Joe is going to talk about daily health checks, which are not required as well. Joe? Yes, last year, uh, if you recall, if your student came back in April, we had uh, daily health attestations that many of you completed online. You do not have to do that this year. Uh, we're very happy about that. <laughs> I'm sure you are too. Um, but we are, are again asking you to please, um, you know, obviously, uh, Ask your students how they're feeling, um, and uh, if they're not feeling well, hopefully stay home. Um, things to look for when you do ask them, obviously a fever um, at any time uh, would be uh, problematic in coming to school. Um, a cough, you're looking for a cough that's different than typical. So if your student typically has a cough, because maybe they have asthma or maybe they have allergies at certain times of year, um, so it's a typical symptom, then you don't have to consider it to be something to be um, too concerned about. But if it is something that, um, that isn't typical and it's come up recently, uh, then that might be um, something worth uh, uh, considering. Shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, obviously that's a problem at any time. Chills, which are a sign of a fever. Um, if they're unusually tired or if they have uh, muscle or body aches, we also can administer a COVID test here at school. Uh, we can do. Uh, we have a drive-by testing capability. So if you are uh, if you are concerned and think maybe um, your student or anybody in your family um, might be exhibiting COVID symptoms and you want to get them tested, uh, you can call us or just come to school. We'll have you drive up. Uh, we'll test you in the parking lot and we'll have those results back for you within 24 hours. Some other symptoms, um, an, a headache um, that again is, is not typical, sore throat, uh, sudden loss of taste or smell, uh, if they're congested, um, nausea or vomiting, diarrhea. So any of those things could be signs of COVID. I know that's a long list and they're also signs of a lot of other things like the common cold, or just being tired, not getting enough sleep, um, or having the flu, um, which we also wouldn't want them here if they had the flu. Um, but uh, we just really want to take a better safe than sorry approach. We will be routinely cleaning and disinfecting classrooms every night uh, throughout the day, um, and especially spaces uh, like restrooms uh, that uh, have a, a greater chance of contamination. We also, we have great uh, ventilation in our system. We're really fortunate, um, we're in our school. Our school's 10 years old, so it's a, it's a new building. Um, and so our ventilation system pushes a lot of air. On top of that, our classrooms is a little picture of one of our rooms. We have ceiling fans in, uh, in almost all of our classrooms, not the science classrooms because they have their own ventilation systems. Um, so we've asked our teachers to, you know, crack their windows open, keep those ceiling fans turning, um, if possible, have their interior door open as well so that we're constantly moving air uh, throughout the building. Uh, hand hygiene is really important. So remind your students, wash their hands. We're gonna ask them to wash their hands frequently. As I mentioned, we have hand sanitizer throughout the school. I know that 
some students, um, hand sanitizer can be a challenge uh, because they, maybe they have dry skin and so soap and water works better for them and that's fine. We have sinks in all of our learning centers that um, uh, learning centers, restrooms throughout all over the building that students can use. Proper mask wearing. Uh, we're gonna watch a short video that the district's asked us to show you about how to wear a mask. So let's let this load. And I have a feeling I'm gonna have to reshare my screen. So one minute here while this is loading. Okay. I knew we should have made our own video, Tulani. We're showing the students our own videos for sure. Yeah. Probably too many people trying to watch it at the same time. Yeah. Well, we're, we're going to turn that part off and, and we'll, uh, so we will go back to uh, sharing the slideshow. We, we're going to talk to students a lot about why it's important to wear a mask, um, how to wear it properly. I, I know most of them probably know how, but um, I, I think it's really important for them to know why, especially in a, in a school with 720 students, it's going to be important that we're all wearing masks. Uh, we have limited access right now to our school. Uh, schools are closed to anybody who is not a student or district staff. Uh, our campuses are closed to, um, unfortunately, family and community volunteers during the school day. Um, our, our school office is open, so if you do have some business you'd like to take care of or a question or a need, um, you can come to our office and we can help you there, um, and, but unfortunately we can't allow um, siblings um, or parents uh, in the rest of the building at this time. Also, students uh, will be asked to bring their Chromebook home every day. Uh, and this is for a very practical reason uh, in the event that maybe the next day they don't feel well and they end up having to stay home uh, for a few days, they would still have access to coursework uh, on Canvas um, or uh, be able to email their teacher and still be able to, um, to do some schoolwork. If they are at home, um, just like any other time our students are sick, uh, we will be uh, sending home schoolwork. Uh, and we do, um, if you would like to, to look at the attendance policy, you can, uh, you can see that on our school district's website. If for some reason our entire school uh, was asked to close, um, I really hope that doesn't happen, um, then we would revert to remote learning. So that's why uh, we would want students to take their Chromebooks home every day. But although we can't allow parents on campus yet, we still need parents for our parent club. And our parent club at Meadow Middle School is not the same as an elementary school PTA. So if any of you have uh, post-traumatic stress from uh, elementary school PTA, <laughs> it's not the same. Really what it is, is it's a coordination of volunteers and um, oversight of maybe some small fundraisers or distribution of classroom grants. Uh, so, we have a, a parent club board. We're looking to um, get some more members on that board. If you are interested, um, please send me an email or call me and I will invite you to our next parent club board meeting. Showing interest does not mean that you're making a commitment. It just means you might be interested. And so, um, uh, but we've always had a really strong parent club here at Meadowdale Middle. They've been amazing in volunteering for school events and supporting our students and our staff. And uh, we know this is another challenge this year, 
but uh, we, we also know that we, we will still have a role uh, for our parents in our school, even though it'll be a little bit more difficult um, than it has been in the past. Mr. Freeman. Hi folks, I just put in the chat a link to the Snohomish County Health Department website, which has information about the COVID vaccine and how to book an appointment. The vaccine is required for all school employees uh, effective mid-October and the vaccine is available. There are some exemptions for medical or religious purposes. Um, the vaccine is available to anyone 12 years and older at this time, which is pretty much everybody in seventh and eighth grade here at Meadowdale Middle School. We, again, like Mr. Webster mentioned, we are able to test students and staff at our school for COVID-19. Results are typically available within approximately 24 hours, sometimes a little bit longer. Along with mask wearing, testing is a key mitigation strategy and it's available at all district schools for students and staff. Mr. Freeman, I'm gonna go back one slide and could you just explain for families if a student is considered a close contact, the difference between uh, whether they are vaccinated or unvaccinated and what happens next? Yes, this is kind of important because if a student has been uh, deemed a close contact, if a student at school gets COVID vaccine and, excuse me, get contracts COVID-19 and anybody within three feet for a period of 15 minutes or longer, is considered to be a close contact. And that close contact, uh, the re quarantine requirements are different whether you're vaccinated or unvaccinated. If you are vaccinated, you do the student's close contacts will not need to quarantine unless they're showing symptoms. And if they show symptoms, they just need, if the symptoms resolve and they test negative, then they're allowed to come back. But uh, again, vaccinated students do not need to quarantine unless they show symptoms, essentially. Then a student that is not vaccinated will need to quarantine for 14 days, for two weeks. So, you know, that's some, just something to be aware of as we do contact tracing. And that's the requirement that the Department of Health and the state and the Snohomish County Health Department puts on us as a district to keep students stay, safe. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Uh, performing arts. At this time, uh, we, we do have band, we do have orchestra, we do have choir. Um, they will be wearing uh, different masks uh, during, uh, if they're singing or playing an instrument with, with their mouth. Um, but uh, those courses are available and they also have some other strategies they'll be using in those spaces to minimize risks for those students. Um, we also, every year at Meadow Middle, we try to have a school musical. Last year, obviously, we did not have one, um, but we are hoping to have another one this year. So if your student is interested in the performing arts, I mean, plays and musicals and that kind of thing, we are hoping to do that right now. Um, we're just waiting uh, to make sure that we would have a space to do it in safely and, um, and that we would be allowed to do that. Use our musical would, would occur sometime in February, late January, early February. So that does give us some time um, to see if we, can, um, if we can do that. Mr. Freeman, you wanna talk about sports? Yeah, athletics. I just put in the chat a link to the district athletics update and what that lets us know, oh, that one did not work, unfortunately. I'll do, oh, because I forgot the colon. Did I forget a colon? No, I had one in there. All right, I'll fix it really quickly. Um, there we go. So the athletics update now works. Um, at this time, students in high school and middle school will be able to participate in all regular fall athletics. Uh, there are, again, mitigation strategies that we have for students and athletes that will be masking when they're not actively training or competing uh, outside. That's once they are training or, or competing outside, they are allowed to do take their masks off for fall sports. Uh, the fall sports that we offer are include football for eighth grade 
and seventh grade this year. We're opening it up to seventh grade boys and eighth grade boys. We have fast pitch softball for girls in grades seven and eight, and the cross country for boys and girls in seventh and eighth grade is a no cut sport. So that means all students who would like to try it and who would like to do some running of all abilities and backgrounds are welcome to come out and give a cross country a shot. And it's a really, we have uh, two good coaches to help guide those teams. One longtime softball coach and two longtime serving football coaches who are also faculty members here at Meadowdale. Student clubs. On our website, as more clubs become active, we will, you know, post the information as far as what clubs we have here. Uh, we always have had several. They meet during the study club time after academic classes have ended at from 2.40 to 3.30. Transportation is provided. So there's a bus, a study club bus to take students home after the club meetings and it departs at 3.30. Students can go ahead to the next slide, Joe. Students can form their own clubs, but some common clubs that we've had most years are Art Club, Black Student Union, Yearbook, La Chispa, Technology Club, Anime Club, and Pride. So as students have more interest, um, they can definitely come to myself or Mr. Webster to suggest an idea for a club and we can help them find a faculty advisor. Historically, we've also had a musical, and we hope to do so again this year. Okay, school bus information. You should, if you've not already, <clears throat> you should receive, um, uh, you should have received in the mail information about your student's bus stop, uh, their pickup uh, time, and their drop-off time, and their bus route. Uh, you can also, um, on your phone, you can download an app and you'd have to go to our district website and it can walk you through the directions to that, but an app called Edulog and that app um, will also give you alerts, real-time alerts in the event that the bus is running late um, or something like, uh, something like that that you might need to know about. Um, oh, yeah, that's what this, this slide's about. Um, so you could uh, put, can you put that link in the chat as well, Mr. Freeman? We do have a shortage of bus drivers in the school district right now. So um, we would ask families to be patient those first few days of school. If the bus isn't there right on time, um, it's probably because uh, we have a new bus driver who um, just completed their training or they have a really long uh, bus route that they have to drive because we don't have enough bus drivers. So if you are interested, in becoming a bus driver, I thought we had a slide for that. There we go. If you're interested in becoming a bus driver, um, the district is looking for people that would like to, to make some extra money and uh, help our kids get to and from school. So you could go to the district website and on there, or Mr. Freeman, I think he's probably putting that link in the chat. Um, are you able to do that one too? Great. So as we mentioned, uh, free breakfast and lunch for all students this year. Uh, although we still do, we still would like you to apply for free reduced lunch meal benefits. Um, it does uh, provide um, a relief of some other fees like ASB cards, stuff like that. Um, and sports, yeah, and reduced uh, sports fees. Um, it would be another, uh, and, and potentially it would qualify you for a reduced cost or even free internet service um, in your home. So if you need a free and reduced lunch form, you can download that off our school's website or we have them here in the main office. If your family needs any financial support at this time, you could download an application um, download as it says right there or call our main line and we can either mail one to you or um, or you can come in and pick one up. Skyward is our district's um, uh, system for student records, grades, uh, your contact information, bus route information. If you haven't been on Skyward lately, um, it 
you, uh, you can also get your student's schedule on Skyward. I believe those will go active uh, tomorrow or Friday. Uh, or if you have moved recently, uh, please update your contact information. Or if you've changed your phone number, you can update your own contact information in Skyward. Um, so that we make sure that you're receiving um, uh, phone calls or emails uh, with information from the school. So then one of the big questions we always get from the kids is, what about my phone? <laughs> so we'll, we, this is the one uh, student expectation that we'll kind of share just so that uh, you're aware of it as a parent. Um, students at Meadowdale Middle School can use electronic devices during non-instructional time. So that's before and after school, during passing time or at lunchtime. During class time, their phones are expected to be put away. Um, I know that's gonna be really challenging for some students because last year their phone really was a lifeline to their friends. Um, and so it's gonna be hard to have them put away for a couple hours at a time, but it's essential so that they're not distracted um, and so that they don't distract others. The way that we deal with this at, at Meadowdale is if a student has a phone out in class, the teacher simply asks them for it. They're not going to engage in a debate about why the phone was out. Um, so just please coach your student. And if that happens, just hand it over. The teacher will bring it down to the main office and will return it to the student at the end of the day. It will be locked up and safe. If it happens a second time, then we will ask a parent to come to school and pick the phone up. Um, and this doesn't mean two times in the same class. This means two times. So um, it's really, really important that you have this conversation with your student. Uh, we don't want to outlaw cell phones or anything like that. We do think it's part of our job to teach students how to use, um, how to use these uh, phones appropriately. You know, we're, as adults, Quite often we're in meetings and it's not appropriate for us to have our phones out. And uh, it's good for our students to start learning that there are times where they just need to be able to put them away and focus on um, the task at hand. There we go. And there it is in Spanish. I'll come back to that. Now it's uh, time for some questions. Um, if you go to the breakout room feature at the bottom of the screen, it allows you to choose, um, I believe, Tulani, you want to verify for me that that's set up right? There should be a... Um, I can't. I see something different because I'm a host. Okay. I see create breakout rooms. I see... I could say let participants choose. Um, let me see. I think I need, yeah, I'll, I'll set up. I think it must not have saved it from earlier. So we are, anyone that um, uh, is not, um, uh, does not want to ask uh, questions or talk in Spanish, Ms. Manano and Ms. Healy are going to go into the Spanish breakout room so that they can speak to you there in Spanish. Um, everybody else can stay here in the main room. And if you have a question, um, if you could do what Ms. Poblano is doing right there, she has her, she raised her hand, then I will um, unmute you and you can ask your question and we'll do our best to answer. Esther. Hi. Hi. This is Esther. My question is, so how do, because Karen, he, uh, she's back to school, but she need, I think she needs a vaccine, but I get the appointment, but it's after uh, a school, like uh, Thursday night. Is this for the COVID vaccine? I don't know, sure. <laughs> I, I think it's uh, probably a question best answered by nurse Cindy, because she has access to all his records and I'll put her email in the chat. And she can tell you whether if, if it's the Tdap or the other vaccines, what's required. Oh, okay. So I'll put Nurse Cindy's uh, email in our chat right now, and it's Cindy Gergen. She's super nice, super helpful, and she'll know everything 
and I'll put her phone number as well in the chat. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Tim. Um, uh, are hats allowed inside? Hats, yeah. Uh, you can wear hats are very similar to cell phones, hats and hoods. Um, you can wear hats and hoods in the hallways during passing time at lunchtime. When you go into the classroom, though, um, your teacher will probably ask you to remove your hat. They will definitely ask you to remove your hood, um, but you can wear them um, at school um, when you're not in class. Oh, okay. Right. Good question. Thank you, Tim. Ms. Gill. Sorry, I have to ask everyone to unmute. So there we go. Hi, thank Hi. you so much for a very detailed information and presentation. I Could you please talk about the sports? Because I got a separate email regarding soccer, football, that is only meant for eighth graders, as my son is not enrolled in. So I would like to know, is it compulsory or it's still room available to enroll him? Yeah, oh, yes. yeah. I'll be glad to answer that. We still have plenty of spots on the football team. Traditionally, it's only been for eighth grade boys, but you know, this year we're opening it up to seventh grade and eighth grade boys. Um, if there's a ton of interest, they may possibly make cuts, but you know, traditionally it's been a team of upwards over 30 participants approaching 40. Um, the other sports offered again are cross this season are cross country and um Best so, pitch. So, uh, it's not compulsory. It's not mandatory. It's, it's, American not mandatory. it's American football. We do have boys and girls soccer that's offered in the next season, which starts up in November, like mid-November or early November. And then we also have rest, um, wrestling, girls basketball, track and field. Yeah. And so, I believe those are later in the spring. And volleyball. Yeah, my if he's not interested this this like month for the for the soccer ball for the American. So, I mean, what is uh, open for him to play as a sport? Yeah, we also have basketball, uh, boys basketball and girls basketball. Uh, okay. We have uh, soccer, boys and girls, wrestling for boys and possibly girls if there's interest uh, in track and field. Thank you very much. And we will communicate out well before each new season what sports are going to be uh, coming and how to sign up. Alyssa. Hi, um, I heard that there's no AP, I'm sorry, AP, advanced English for eighth grade. Can you tell me why and what the, um, what the classes will look like because of that? Yes, so eighth graders will all take English um, and they'll all have eighth grade English. Um, our honors, English program in the past has been heavily dependent. Um, this, there, there's a big answer to an important question that I probably won't be able to do justice to in this venue. So if you want to talk more about it, you can call me. But we've been heavily dependent upon data in order to determine um, it, you know, which students uh, would qualify for an honors uh, type of a class and which ones would it maybe not be a great idea. Um, and Frankly, for the last two years, we don't have extremely accurate data for a lot of our students. And so separating them based upon the data that we do have, we just feel would honestly be borderline unethical. Um, also, just from a class count perspective, when we did sit down and look at those students who had requested honors, um, we realized that our, our classes were going to be very unbalanced. And again, as I mentioned earlier, my first filter right now is um, the pandemic and making sure that our classrooms are safe for all of our students. And so having 35 students in a room and 25 in another because we offer honors English, um, I'm not gonna do it. And uh, because the safety of the kids is more important than that. Um, so that's, you know, in that, that's the short answer. Um, but if you'd like to talk more about it, um, I, I'd be happy to talk with you about it on the phone or if you want to uh, stop by school. Does that answer your question? Uh, sort of. <laughs> okay. Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, Ms. Roberts. 
I'm curious about the musical and or drama club. I didn't see it listed as a club. That's something my daughter's interested in. Um, and I, you talked about the musical, but is that musical only, you know, announced to choir students or are there other, is it a school-wide thing where they can do set design and costume yep. design and? Yep, it's open to all students. Um, we have uh, auditions usually in early November. Uh, some students want to perform in it. Uh, some, like you mentioned, want to help design sets or do costumes or do makeup um, or help with lighting. Um, so there's a lot of different roles um, involved in that. It's a really big undertaking. Um, and we really, really hope we'll be able to do it again. Um, of course, it's one of those things that's you know at risk right now. So we hope things improve. Um, but yes, you, you do not have to be in choir um, to be in the musical. And if somebody wanted to start a drama club, that has that been done in the past? Yeah, we've had a drama club in the past. Um, it's been a little while because I think the musical kind of, uh, you know, catered to kids that would would have wanted to be in a drama club. Um, but if people wanted to do some kind of, uh, you know, improv club or something like that, we've had things like that in the past as well. So if, if students had an interest there, they could just come to Mr. Freeman or I, and we could try to hook them up with a, uh, a staff member to, um, to help with that. Okay, and one other quick question, and this is um, logistics, I guess. If you are already part of the Edmond School District and your student was a sixth grader last year, Skyward all just transfers to the middle school. Is there anything that we yep. need to do? Nope, you should be able to sign in using the credentials that you had before. Okay, thank you. You bet. Courtney. All right, hi. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, keeping the student safety as the priority and all the work that y'all have done around that. Uh, so just wanted to say a big thank you for that for all the staff. Um, I had two questions. Uh, the first is, um, what about student planners? They've been provided by the school in the primary level, or um, are we to maybe find one that works for our student? Um, what, what, are, what are planners looking like? <laughs> yeah, great I, I question. To that. So I'll sure. try to tackle that one. Yeah. Or, uh, sure, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I, I know in the, pla in the past, planners have been provided to students here at Meadowdale Middle School, but by and large, they have chose students have chosen to not use them and you know much to the chagrin of teachers who have scheduled planner checks and backpack checks in homeroom which is like our advisory period at the start of every single day uh, I think we'll still have those kind of backpack checks and organizational checks in homeroom or no we will rather and it's just a question of you know an intervention or something that works for kids if, if it's seems to be useful or if it's in a in a 50 something like a 504 if there's a plan for your student to have a planner we'll we'll certainly provide one but um it's certainly something that you might want to discuss with your student about what works best for them and then also possibly reaching out to the homeroom teacher to um coordinate if that's something that you're using with your student and you'd like them to use and so what, and, oh. what we're finding i'm sorry but what we're finding is a lot of students are like a lot of adults they've moved on to using electronic uh forms of organization. Something that was really underutilized last year that we're gonna really ask our kids to use is the calendar that they have in Canvas. If their students assign them in a, a, something in Canvas, it populates that calendar automatically um, and it, it can keep track of everything for them much in the same way that you know, we have our calendars you know, on our phone and appointments and things to do. Um, students also sometimes use their phone to stay organized. So um, there's, if a student would like a paper planner, I strongly encourage uh, encourage you to get them one because I know that um, there are still many of us as adults who still like to have that paper planner as well. We just found that buying, you know, eight or nine hundred of them um, and handing them to the students of which, you know, probably more than half didn't really use them uh, very effectively was not a great use of our resources. Okay, thank you. Um, and the second question uh, is uh, students who are allowed to carry um, inhalers for asthma, are they allowed to carry on person as needed? Yes. yes. Okay, 
All right. Thank you so much. Yep. You're welcome. And they would just need to make sure, again, that their medical forms have transferred over from elementary school and that, that goes to nurse. That'd be a question to inform nurse Cindy about and her contact info is still in the chat there. Okay, great. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Um, I have a couple questions. The first is about lockers. Um, are students using lockers this year? Is there any attempt to like space them out so that they're distance? And um, sorry, I forgot the second one. You can I'll, tackle that one. The first, I'll tackle the first one. We don't have student lockers. Uh, oh, okay. Our students carry what they need with them in their backpack. We do have a limited number of lockers for students who maybe for medical reason or something like that might really need a locker. We can issue them to a limited number of students. And we also have a few lockers for students to access during their sports season. So for example, if they were playing basketball, they could put their basketball shoes and shorts and all that in a locker during the day. They don't have to carry them around with them. But, uh, but our students, other than that, carry their belongings with them in a backpack. And then my other question was, will students be allowed to eat lunch outside? We don't eat outside, but as soon as they're done eating, they can go outside. Is there anything we could do to change that? Can we like certain students allowed outside? Like I'm not really comfortable with my kid eating indoors with a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah, and that's why we're having four lunches. Um, we've traditionally run two. Um, our, our lunchroom is, is a very, very large space with a 30 foot high ceiling. Um, and, and we have doors to the outside there um, that you know, will most likely on a nice day will be open. Uh, but when the weather changes, eating outside is not, is not very practical. And um, so it's, it, that's, that's why we've gone to more lunches. I think what kids are gonna find is that there's plenty of space and they can stay spread out. Um, and uh, you know, when we get school started and we think that we, wow, we need more space, outside is an option. But right now, um, we're, we're trying to keep our, our students and, and, uh, and their lunches indoors. Um, Sweetwood. Uh, yeah, I had a question about PE. And I know, I think last year when you guys started school, I know that the locker rooms were not open. Um, are you guys going to have the locker rooms open? Are they changing or are they just where would you come with? That's a great question. I actually, now that you mentioned that, I wish I put it in the slideshow. Um, our locker rooms right now are closed uh, during, for PE, and that's from uh, the school district. Um, so none of the secondary schools are going to be accessing their locker rooms for PE. What we are going to do is allow students to go into the locker room in small groups to put their belongings, their backpack and whatnot in there so we can lock the locker room up and they're safe. But uh, students would want to, on their day that they have PE, um, wear clothes to school that they would be comfortable doing PE in. Um, if they want to bring an extra T-shirt to throw on afterward, you know, or some deodorant, because we all know what middle schoolers um, are, are like, um, that's a great idea. Uh, but we won't be uh, changing as we have in the locker room in the past. Our locker rooms will be open for students to change for sports after school, but again, in uh, small groups that'll be uh, monitored by, uh, by the coaches. Yeah, and, and like John mentioned, I think the small groups, we're gonna keep it to 15 to 20 kids at a time in the locker room for the drop off of their belongings as well. Yes. And Shelly. Hi there, I just wanted to ask, I know that, um, with you know adults and work and things like that if we stay home for illness often they want us to have a negative covid test before we come back right. um is that going to be something that's going to be required no not at this time okay perfect. what i've read in the guidelines um shelly is um i believe you know if you're if your student has one or two symptoms you know more than two symptoms maybe you might want to get a test but that's your decision. If, if those symptoms improve over a 24 hour period when the student's been home and like they don't have a fever and it's resolved, then that student is well, is I believe welcome to come back. As long awesome. as, they, as long as it's just one, one symptom or one or two symptoms and you can verify that, you can always ask nurse Cindy again, if it's, if it's safe to come back, she's the person to double check that with. All right, thank you. Yep. Uh, Tatiana. 
Uh, yes, uh, we were just wondering what your gum chewing policy was. <laughs> oh, that's a great question. So Actually, she was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> we we ask students not to uh, not to have gum at school. Uh, you know, I worked in the old Meadowdale Middle School, and when we tore that thing down, it felt like they were tearing the bricks apart, and they were all held together by gum. Um, so when we uh, when we opened the brand new school ten years ago, uh, we kind of made it a point to. Um, to try to keep gum out uh, out of the classrooms. Now we do have some students that um, because of uh, maybe anxiety or something like that, or, or maybe on a test day, their, te their teacher might let them um, chew on some gum if that helps. Um, but uh, but our, overall our school has, um, has a policy that we don't allow gum. All right, perfect, thank you. Yep, yep. Angela. Hi there, uh, my question. Um, my question is, and I know it sounds um, pretty negligent on my, my part, but I apologize. Got a lot going on. Um, schedules, um, do you, and I, I'm sorry if you um, covered this in the beginning portion of the meeting, I wasn't able to hop on at seven. So um, have schedules gone out and is there still an opportunity for um, our student to um, join or request choir? Um, it's something that I think Meadowdale solicited to her actually when she was still at her elementary school. And I just basically dropped the ball, wasn't able to connect with Meadowdale in, in between. So now I'm super, I'm super worried that she was expecting to be in choir and I have no idea where to even start. So if your student wants choir, we will move them into choir. Um, there are some electives we have more freedom to move students into than others, but um, we, We've always had a very, very strong music program at Meadowdale Middle School. And one of my biggest fears over the last year and a half has been that the pandemic is going to make it difficult for us to rebuild those programs. And so any student that wants choir band or orchestra, um, they're, they're, they're gonna be there. So um, the schedules are not out yet. Hopefully we'll be able to put them out um, or activate Skyward uh, tomorrow or Friday so you can see your student's schedule on there. Um, and Ms. Hyde is here listening. And so she'll write your name down. What's your student's name? Sophia Solorio. Sophia Solorio. So she'll check her schedule in the morning to see if she has choir and give you a call. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yep. Um, Michael. Or Michelle. Yeah, it's Michael. I guess right. We, yeah, good job. We have a couple of questions here. Uh, the first, can you talk a bit about how the first day or two is going to go with finding classrooms and navigating the schedule? Yes. So uh, the first day, really the only place that's that'll be helpful if students know when they walk in the door is who is their homeroom teacher. So if they see their schedule on Skyward and they know who their homeroom teacher is, we can point them in the right direction. We're gonna have eighth graders here wearing green shirts that say MMS Vikings on them. And uh, they can uh, help point kids in the right direction. We'll have um, the teachers who are not in homeroom classes helping. If they don't know their homeroom teacher, uh, we'll have lists. They'll just tell us their name. We'll tell them where to go. Their homeroom teacher will then have a paper copy of their schedule with a map on the back and one of the first things they'll do is they'll all go through the process of identifying where all of their classes are in the building. And what I would tell every seventh grader is if you don't know where to go, that's perfectly normal. And we will help you find wherever you need to go. So don't stress out about it. We're not going to worry about it if you're, you know, a little bit late to a class because you're trying to find your way around. That happens every year. So that won't be a problem. Okay. Yeah, thank you. And I guess the second question then is around dress code and, and I guess what's considered appropriate and inappropriate. Our dress code is, is pretty basic. Um, we just ask students to dress for um, where they are, which is school. So uh, we, um, uh, it, you can go online and actually find our student handbook and it has the dress code spelled out uh, there. But there are very few things that we say you cannot have uh, or cannot wear. Um, we uh, don't want to see, um, you know, underwear and or bare bellies and things like that. 
Um, but, uh, and we don't want to see shirts that, uh, you know, that glorify guns or drugs or alcohol. But um, uh, other than that, there are very few things in there um, that are not allowed. So I, I would rep, I would um, point you in the direction of our student handbook. But um, most of our kids wear sweats and a t-shirt or a hoodie or some shorts and some tennis shoes and they, and it's perfect. All right, thank you very much. Yep. And Michelle. Uh, my question was regarding PE and you already answered it, thank you. Oh, great. Sean. Oh yeah, my question, what was that about the football? Is that tackle or a flag? It's tackle. Tackle. Yep. Oh, so when do you got to register for that for for a kid? Um, it would be uh, right now. You can uh, you can go uh, again on our website. Go to activities and athletics, and you can fill out paperwork online there. They do need a physical exam uh, within the last two years, so I would recommend if they don't have a physical exam in the last two years, they get one right away because everybody's going to be trying to do it at the same time. And we know what the healthcare system looks like right now. And then there's also a COVID waiver that you can either download off our website or you can pick one up here in the office. Sports don't start until the second Monday or uh, the first Monday. So the 13th of September. So we'll have a couple of days there um, to help uh, families and students get, um, get oriented to what they need for sports. And also uh, for the football, are you guys allowing for like assistant coaches to help or parents that have been coaching to co help coach? Not at this time. Um, you have to be, uh, a, there's a process that you have to go through uh, to be what's called an extra help coach or a volunteer coach. Um, and that would make you a district employee. Um, and right now our school district is just really trying to reduce the number of interactions that our students have with others. And so we're, they're not allowing volunteers at this time, unfortunately. All right. Thank you so much. You bet. And a note on the COVID waiver, we're going to try to get that added to our web athletics website soon, like tomorrow soon. Um, that's a paper form. Uh, I would love to just get it able for you folks to download. I don't have an electronic one handy, but that's just an additional thing on top of the online forms that there are. So your students should be, bring, if they're wanting to participate in sports, they'll probably be bringing that home in the first week of school to get that signed. Uh, Susie. Yeah, I was wondering um, if you're going to allow water bottles. Yes. Uh, because are the drinking fountains still closed? No, the drinking fountains well. are not closed, but we are going to encourage <laughs> students to use a water bottle, refill them at the sinks or the drinking fountains. Um, it is safer. Um, and we also have a bottle filler here on campus that they can use near the commons. Okay, thank you. And yeah. yeah, and students, you know, our classes are quite long, they're 100 minutes, over 100 minutes long. So they're able to, you know, quickly, and we'll talk to faculty about this and students as well. At, lift their mask up, take a drink and put it down. They're able to have a quick drink in the classroom if they need, you know, and um, that's definitely an option. David. Oh, got to, I've got to un un unmute him. My apologies, David. Here we go. Okay, we'll go on to uh, Mariah. Yeah, hi. I was having a question regarding the gum that you were asking or talking about earlier. Yes. Um, would we need a note? Uh, my daughter recently developed ticks, and so she's and she has audio ticks, and so we're a little concerned with her, um, you know, going back to the classroom and just possibly being a disruption. And so we obviously didn't want that. Um, so I'm just curious if we needed like a note or something that might help with that. If you could send us something like that, that'd be great. So we can let the teachers know, um, you know, with the things like gum, there's always an exception to every rule. And so, um, yeah, just send something like that uh, for us to distribute to the teachers. And that'd be really helpful. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Thera. 
Hi. Um, did I say I, your name right? Yeah. The, yes. Sorry. I couldn't remember okay. whether you did or not. Thera. Yes, it is. Um, I was wondering about the, you mentioned masks for like band and choir. Are there like specialty masks that you guys are providing? Will we yes. need to purchase? Okay. We'll provide them and some of them are cloth. And so we will wash them. Um, and, you know, we have enough to go for a few days and then um, sanitize them and redistribute them. Um, after your students see them, if they decide, you know what, I might rather have my own, um, they're certainly welcome to do that. But, um, but it seemed to work out last spring for our students that were, that were here in band. Okay. And then if a student becomes uncomfortable with the environment of say band, would they potentially be able to switch to a non <laughs> aerosolized elective, I guess, <laughs> if, um, that were to happen. Yeah, it would, um, it would honestly depend on availability. Um, okay. And the other thing is students will also have bell covers. So, you know, they'll have masks on their face and also masks on their horns. Um, and so, and the, our band rooms are, are also large and have high ceilings and, and good ventilation. So um, uh, we played last, we played last spring, obviously in smaller groups, um, but didn't seem to have many issues with that, but it, it's certainly a concern. Okay, thank you. And then my final thing was I tried to look at the student handbook online for the dress code policy, which you guys mentioned earlier. Um, yeah. I wasn't able to access it through my phone. I haven't tried on my computer, but there was no way for me to actually get it to open. I don't know if it was my phone or the website, but just thought I would shout that out there. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. I'll, I'll thank look you. right now. Okay. I'm looking you. right now. I got the student handbook and it's not letting me download it. I think that's a, we just updated it with a new one and I think the link is not playing nice. So we will try to get that fixed uh, first thing tomorrow. Awesome. Yeah, thank it's you under, so much. It's under about then student handbook and behavior expectations and we will do our best, we'll try our best to get that fixed in the morning. Thank you thank for joining us now. Uh -huh. Aurora. You hear me? Yes. Okay, <laughs> sorry, thank you. And I appreciate it for all the information they give it us. And so thank you so much. And my question is, um, my son, he got a star for seventh grade. And I don't know if it will switch a Chromebook or when they can do it, or he could keep it the one, the old one. So that's my question. Good question, yes. Uh, so students, if they were in the Edmonds School District last year, should have their Chromebook still from last year. Have them bring that with them on the first day of school. Uh, that, that will be their Chromebook for the start of school. We will be swapping out several Chromebooks, um, but it'll probably take us a few weeks, um, if not into October, um, to get that done. So, um, and so in the meantime, their Chromebook they have now. And now, if there's a problem with their Chromebook, we have a Chromebook tech here on campus. Um, who can give them a loaner for a day or even longer if, if, they, if, if it's needed, because we do want them to all have a working device. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, Tatiana. Uh, miss, I was trying to look up the handbook also on the dress code. Um, we were wondering about tank tops. Tank tops are okay. Okay, just spaghetti strap or the regular... Tank, we don't walk around checking out strap <laughs> width. Okay, she's... She was really consistent on that one. <laughs> yeah. No, I know uh, a lot of elementary schools, you know, that is an issue that they do care about that. Um, we, we don't. Okay. And uh, shorts, like, do they have to be like, do they finger obviously you don't want super short, but do they have to be finger length? Uh, again, we don't walk around asking kids to put their hands down um, or, or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, if we feel like somebody's come to school um, boy or girl, and they're wearing something that's inappropriate, uh, we'll probably take them aside and just kind of try to have a conversation with them. We don't want students to feel judged or shamed or anything like that over what they choose to wear. Um, but if we feel like maybe they just aren't aware that what they're wearing may not be appropriate for school, um, then we'll just have a conversation with them. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that they'll be forced to change or anything like that. Um, it will just depend. We, Dress codes are like a lot of rules. People like them, like them to be real simple, uh, real black and white. 
Um, but the world isn't that way. And so we don't treat it that way. And so um, uh, I would just encourage, like when I go to the beach, I wear a swimsuit. When I go to school, I don't. And I would encourage students to just consider when they're coming to school, um, what they're here to do and dress appropriately for those activities. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yep. Um, E-V-E-R-G. Hi there. Hi. Um, my son wanted to me to ask if uh, students have a chance this year to improve their grades on assignment like they did online last time. We believe in retakes. We believe in uh, students growing and learning from their mistakes. Um, and so in a lot of cases, if a student um, does an assignment or takes a test um, or turns something in and it, they feel like they could do better, um, their teacher will most likely provide them with an opportunity to do that. Um, there are some times where it might be a, um, you know, a, a, a summative test of some kind and it may be where it's a, it's a one-time um, thing, but uh, pretty much anything that I think impacts students' grades, our teachers allow students to um, to improve their performance and um, and put you know do the best they can. Thank you. Yep. iPad. I don't know, Mister iPad. There, we'll try again. iPad. There we go. Yeah. Uh, it's allowed a uh, student to bring the pepper, uh, pepper spray to school. Bring what to school? Pepper, pepper spray? Pep no. Mm -hmm. no. No. Okay. Thank you. So state, just so you know, state law on that is at age 16, um, you are allowed to carry pepper spray and no school uh, or uh, institution can pass an independent rule against that, but you have to be 16, right. I believe. Okay. And uh, Michael. Yeah, hi there. Uh, so question about the Chromebook. My, so my daughter used a personal Chromebook during the pandemic and was never issued a, a Edmond School District Chromebook. So, and I've contacted the office and didn't get a call back. So how do I proceed with getting her one now that she's returning to school? Yeah, first I apologize if you called and didn't get a call back. Um, I, on the first day of school, uh, when your daughter goes into homeroom, one of the first questions that they're going to be asked is, do you have a Chromebook? And if you don't, then we're going to have them. Uh, we're going to let our Chromebook tech know. Um, we're not going to have a whole bunch of stuff happening, uh, you know, right away where if they don't have a Chromebook, oh my gosh, I'm missing out on this. So we'll make sure that our students have a working Chromebook before they're assigned anything or asked to do anything with it. Okay. Yeah, and you also might want to reach out to the help desk. Um, they technology help desk will be able to help you maybe get that ahead of time. Yeah. Um, quite possibly. Um, I'm trying to find the correct link. Help desk is for staff. So I'm trying to think of the correct email for students. I'll put that in the chat shortly here as soon as well, I Well, you could dial uh 425 431 7333. No. Rachel says no. What? Oh, Rachel, I gotta, I gotta unmute Rachel so she can correct me. Chromebook Tech. Um, he told me four two five four three one one two one one and gave me the uh, email address as well, and they can make an appointment to go in and and get one prior to school starting. Um, I can type it in the chat if you give me permission, or I can. Email I got. It. I just did it, Rachel. Okay. So thank you. Yeah. Tech support at edmunds15.org. Yeah, or that number Rachel mentioned, 545-431-1211. I think they're down because they're doing setup for the school year. I think they're down from 8, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. I'm not positive. I feel like those hours I just posted changed, but I know they're available. Natasha. Hi. I was just curious about um, what our average class sizes are looking like for our seventh graders that are coming in. And a second question would be, um, when do these after school program um, classes or that they can stay an hour for after 
does it start the following week or the, the week of? Um, could you clarify those two things, please? Yeah, so study club will start on September 20th. So that'll be the second full week of school. And, um, and then your, your question about average class size, um, Rachel might be better able to answer that than me, but I would put our average class size probably around 28, 29. Does that sound right, Rachel? Yeah, it'll range between 28 to 30, usually. We wish they were smaller. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And then while I have you, one more question in regards, do you know if there will be any type of social distancing on our school buses? Uh, at this time, I think, I, I do not believe so. Students will be required to have masks on. Um, but I know that with a shortage of bus drivers, I think they're just worried about completing all of the routes and making a bus ride available for students to get to school. Hopefully on a nice sunny day, we have windows down. Um, uh, what I heard Joe was uh, at the new leader orientation was that those windows are gonna be down no matter what, not all the way down, but there will be ventilation as a mitigating measure and that students should are advised to bundle up. I know it was 48 degrees when I woke up woke up this morning. So there will be airflow on the buses at, you know, rain or shine is what okay. I was told Good. earlier this week or last week. David, we have time for a couple more questions. Is that David that I, uh, I okay, guest user. Hello, I want to know how can my daughter sign up for after club, for the after, after school club? Yeah, when school gets started, uh, our teachers will let students know uh, what days of the week uh, clubs are, or if it's study club, study club is four days a week and students don't have to sign up for that. Um, they can go every day if they want to go and get some extra help from their teachers. But we will make sure students know how to do that when we get them all here um, on campus. Um, Ms. Dira. Hello again. Um, so I was wondering, uh, you mentioned earlier, something brought it up, but um, the, the classes the kids are in, so they're in block schedules, but are they in classes with like similar kids throughout the whole day or do all of those like change up um, from, you know, first period to second period, third period and on? Yeah, they change. They're not in a consistent cohort throughout the day. There's a few reasons for that. Um, it's primarily just based in the fact that not all kids signed up for the same electives. Um, we have some students that are at different levels in math. Um, we have some students who receive um, special education services in one class, but maybe not in another class. Um, so they, they're, I think your question is around cohorting, like at the elementary yeah. school level, and we're not able to do that. Okay, thank you. Now we will, just so you know, within those classes, be asking teachers to keep um, daily seating charts um, or anytime any, any of the, the seating chart changes, they have to have that documented um, so that we can uh, and to keep the students within the classroom if they're working with like three other kids for it to stay those three kids that day so that in the event that we do have someone um, who tests positive uh, we aren't trying to contact trace with the entire class but we can try to limit it to as few students as possible okay thank you Susie I have time for two more questions from Susie and Manuela Thank you. Um, I was just wondering about the four lunches. Will your child have the same lunch consistently throughout the week or will it switch from one lunch to another lunch? Kind of, I- That's I possible. To... Yeah. Okay. So they, they eat lunch according to their third or fourth period class. Okay. And for example, PE classes always eat fourth lunch because we don't want to eat lunch and then go try to run around the track, right? That's not okay. a good idea. <laughs> yeah. um, and science classes, 
Um, we usually in the past have always tried to have them have the last lunch so they could do labs and not be interrupted in the middle of class by a lunch. So this year, science classes have first lunch so they can have lunch and then go have an uninterrupted class. So if you're a student, for example, at science third period and PE fourth period, then they would have first lunch on Mondays and Wednesdays and fourth lunch on Tuesdays and Thursdays. The one nice thing about that is kids are always worried about, do I have lunch with my friends? And that's legit. You know, I mean, they're coming here with a cohort of kids. They know from elementary school. Number one concern. (laughs) Yes. And so if they don't have lunch with their friends on one day, odds are they have lunch with at least some of their friends on the other day, just because of the fact that um, the lunches aren't locked down uh, to be the same every day. Did, I hope that answered your question. Um, Manuela. Thank you, Mr. Webster. By any chance, do you know if uh, school buses are limiting the numbers of students uh, that will be allowed to go on the bus? And if yes, what's the magic number? Right now, I believe buses will be running as normal, which means uh, two students to a seat. Um, I forget what the capacity of a bus is, um, how many seats they have, but I don't believe there are plans at this time uh, to limit or or, uh, seating because they just frankly don't have enough buses to get all the students to and from school if we do that. Um, That's one of the reasons why I do anticipate that a lot more parents will probably choose to self-transport at least for a little while here. And maybe that will create some space on the buses. Um, But I I share your concern. I have a a 10th grader and I will be driving him to school every day because I really don't want him riding a school bus. Yes, that's my, I'm still debating on that. She's vaccinated, but still I don't feel comfortable with Delta variant, it's too much. Thank you so much for taking my question. I appreciate that. You bet. Well, I wanna thank everybody. I know we said we'd try to be done by 7.30 and in typical Meadowdale fashion, we're getting done at eight. Um, We will post uh, this recording on our website. So if you have a friend who wasn't able to make it, or if there are parts of it you'd like to watch again, um, it'll be there, it'll be accessible for a couple of weeks. Um, As I said before, we are really looking forward to having kids back at school, even though it's going to be difficult. It's way better than trying to do this online. Uh, So thank you for coming and um, we really appreciate your questions and hope that uh, we were able to uh, put you uh, at least a little bit at ease about the start of the school year. Tulani, anything? Oh, that's it. Really looking forward to working with your students this year. And please reach out to uh, us, Mr. Webster, myself, uh, the counselors and individual teachers if you have questions as the year continues on. Thank you to our interpreters. Thank you, Ms. Hyde. Thank you, Ms. Maribel. And everybody have a great evening and a great Labor Day weekend. Night.